Hi guys, I'm here today to talk to you about the nine square project. Um, so this project is going to be nine squares, all about the elements and principles of art coming together to tell your story. The basic assignment is that you are going to be creating a drawing composed of nine four by four squares. Um, you can choose what goes into each square, but the overall drawing should tell your story in some way. You may choose the materials um, to work with, but your work must incorporate color in a meaningful way. Each square of your design should have a different dominant element and principal pair. So it should be different from all of the other element and principal pairs in the whole drawing. I want you to choose your elements and principles wisely and select the ones that would best show your concept. Finally, the overall design should show unity. So um, next we're going to look at some student examples and talk about um, how they do some of these things. Um, so for this first student example, um, let's look at what we see um, in terms of element and principle pairings in each square. Um, I'll do one and then you can pause the video um, and write down your sketchbook or say out loud um, what other ones you see, what other ones stand out to you. So as I look um, at the upper left corner, um, I see um, that the artist has used shape and that they have repeated that shape. So shape and repetition are working together in this square. What other ones do you see? How about this drawing? What elements and principles do you see working together in this drawing in each square? Okay, so one of the major things that you will have to do to earn creativity, to earn your 25 potential points in creativity, is to think of a way to create unity in your design. So unity, again, is what brings the design together um, and makes it all feel like it's part of one whole. It's very, very easy in a project like this to create variety in a sense because, you know, we're already breaking it down into nine separate pieces. But what can you do visually to create unity and connect everything in your drawing? So what do you think that the artist has done here to create unity? What about here? How has the artist created unity in this design? Um, you're going to have a choice of materials for this project. Um, so you will get to choose from the materials that are in your kit. Um, for my students, that includes things like watercolors and color pencils. Um, you also have a glue stick, so if you have some um, paper elements like magazines or books that you could cut up at home, you could use things like collage, um, so cut paper could be part of your design. Um, you know, other, other objects that you can source from home could be part of your design. Um, pencil, charcoal, all of those could be part of your design. We've got Sharpie in your, our, our kit as well. Um, you might even have some other things at home that I don't know about that you could make part of your design too. Um, so as you're looking at this drawing, what materials stand out to you? What about this drawing? What materials stand out to you in this nine square? What about this drawing? What materials stand out? Um, 
Another question to answer um, as a designer um, is how are you going to incorporate color into your project? Um, there's a lot you guys get to decide on your own about how to incorporate color. I, I said basically that color has to contribute to the design in a meaningful way. Um, I think that there are a lot of different directions you could go and still meet that requirement. Um, we're going to look at a few here um, and hopefully ex um, explore some different options about how um, these artists um, use color in their work. So how do you think color contributes to this design? What kind of colors do you see? How do they help to move your eye around the piece? How about the use of color in this design? It's very different than the first one. What kind of colors do you notice? How do those colors move your eye around this work of art? Do they draw your attention to any particular areas? One thing I say about this piece is if you look at it, I can, I can see that this was not made on paper. Um, so again, you know, if you've got some other options at home, um, or if you want to use some materials from the classroom, if you're an in-class student, um, you know, and you think you've got an idea about how you can incorporate those and make, make an interesting drawing, I think that would be a great idea. This person has clearly incorporated cardboard as their surface, uh, so they didn't use regular paper. They cut their squares all out of cardboard. That might be really fun, say, if you wanted to use a heavier technique or if you had heavier materials that you wanted to attach, like so you maybe don't want the floppiness of the paper if you're gonna cover a piece of your, um, like one of your squares with buttons or something. If you've got a lot of buttons at home, you wanna make that part of your design. Maybe there's a reason that you can think of that you would need to, um, re, uh, to have something heavier. And if that's, you know, if that's the case for you, I'm totally fine with you using something like cardboard as a base instead of um, paper. Um, definitely, uh, it's always good for our environment for you to think of ways to re, uh, recycle things from home. Um, I don't know about you, but, you know, I always have a, a piece or two of cardboard laying around um, that I can cut up um, and make use of in an assignment like this. The one thing I would say if you're going to do cardboard, as I look at this, um, you know, if I was grading this particular piece, I would say the craftsmanship uh, of the cutting of the squares, um, in this case, uh, you know, it, it's not very neat. Um, the squares are not very square. <laughs> so uh, if, if this person were in my class, I would probably have encouraged them before they started their painting to recut their squares because, um, that craft is just not great there. So um, it's a little trickier to cut something like cardboard. You probably want something like a box cutter, um, you know, to do that. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about cutting uh, paper a little bit later. You can cut your paper with just a pair of scissors. But if you do want to do cardboard, you might need a little extra, you know, tools, which you might have around the house. Just, uh, you know, ask your ask your folks if they've got a box cutter if you're at home. If you're in the art room, you could certainly use uh, one of our box cutters and we have plenty of cardboard for you too. Um, so we were talking about color um, already. How does uh, color function in this piece? I feel like one thing that I look at in this particular piece is um, how the artist has spread different colors around. Like on the right side, um, there's mostly brown and red and that the red is a very powerful color and it draws my eye right to it. Um, and I feel like if the artist had just left all the red over on that side, my eye would get stuck there, but they did something really smart and they put some red in the upper left hand corner. So that keeps my eye moving around. I think the artist in this case did a really great job with thinking about how to place different colors in different um, positions. All right, so um, we also know that these um, nine square drawings are going to be co um, communicating our story 
um, or communicating your story rather in some way. Um, now you guys are going to get some freedom on how you want to interpret that. You know, what is your story? You know, what does that mean to you? Is it things about you right now? Cause I kind of feel like when I look at this one, when I look at this image, like it, it tells me, I, I feel like I'm looking at something that's made by a teenager about things that interest them right now. Um, so I see the symbol that makes me think of math and I see ice cream and I see makeup maybe for the upper center square. Um, I also see some, some things that are more ambiguous. Like I'm not quite sure how to interpret them. I see the arrows on the upper, um, right hand side and the centerpiece that has all those little circles over tie dye. Um, and then I see the zebra and the, the lion pattern. I don't know. I, I, I think that those um, maybe feel to me as a viewer, like things that are less concrete, like a love of math or a love of rock music is pretty concrete. I might think of, you know, these other things as maybe something that they're trying to say about, you know, kind of their feelings, perhaps um, like the arrows. But and I think about high school, high school is a time when you have to make um, many different decisions. So maybe these are all arrows um, that are, you know, talking about conflicting, you know, decisions that one might have to make in life. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just trying to make, you know, make an educated guess as a viewer about what these things might mean um, as I look at them. And it's okay. You might have, you might take some of these totally different ways. That's the great thing about art is that you can interpret it in different ways. Um, Definitely, as someone who's made art um, for a long time, you know, people people always find interesting and surprising ways to interpret what you've made, um, and that can be one of the most rewarding um, parts of making art. What about here? What do you see? How would you interpret this? How does this tell their story? One thing I'll say about this piece too is the craft is not great of the squares. We're gonna make some some neater squares. Um, I definitely want you guys to think about making your craft intentional. Um, so making everything look um, intentional. Um, in this case, we are making squares. We're going to aim to make them as square as possible. Try to eliminate that sort of crookedness from them. That aside, what do you see then maybe this person is trying to say about their life. What about this person? What might they be trying to say about their life? Or their story? All right, so finally, uh, this is the rubric um, for the project. This is what your grade will be based on. 25% um, of your grade will come from craft. Um, when we talk about craft, that's your use of materials. The use of materials should see, seem intentional. Um, you know, that means to me that you've taken time with your materials, um, that you haven't done something like creased your uh, work up and put it at the bottom of your book bag, your dog hat and chewed on it, okay? It looks well made and it looks presentable and it looks like you did what you did on purpose. Um, craft, I, I mentioned the, the squares and some of the images because some of these um, student work show, um, really stood out to me for, you know, needing a little work on the craft. Um, but we're gonna talk about how to get our squares to be nice and square. Um, I'll be looking for you to have good craftsmanship on your squares. Uh, lastly, for craft, um, we're looking for your photography um, that you turn in your work with to, to follow the course expectations. So it should be well lit. Um, it should not be blurry. It should be taken from the proper, proper angle to eliminate distortion. And it should be cropped to remove the background while still showing the whole image. Um, next, we have completion. So 25% of that is 25% um, of your score comes from that. That means your work comes to a logical conclusion. It looks complete. 
um, and it's turned in by the date requested in the appropriate format. 25% uh, of your grade will come from creativity. Um, that means in this project that you came up with a smart and unique way to unify your design, so to bring it all together. Um, your design also shows your story in an engaging way. Again, you can interpret your story. What does that mean to you? You know, it could be your life right now. It could be your history. You know, it could be um, what you hope for your future. It could be, you know, the history of your ancestors. Um, your story is your story, and you get to prioritize what you want to tell us about. Um, next, we've got 25% um, of your grade comes from comprehension. Um, so that means that each square in this composition represents a different element and principle pairing. Okay. Um, I also want you guys to note that your grade is going to come from what you make and from your written reflection. So, you know, with comprehension, for instance, where it says each square represents a different element and principle pair. I will definitely, most definitely, <laughs> be asking you guys to, to write about that in your reflection. So, um, you know, you should really be, you know, make that a consideration in the design process. You know, what element and principle am I representing? And you should be able to communicate about it um, in your written reflection, right? Because your grade will come from that. Um, if you were to, for instance, say, like, I don't know, or, you know, um, I didn't really consider that in my design process, then that would not... Uh, reflect very well on your comprehension in this case. Um, so that is the rubric. Um, we will be working on these um, brainstorming next time, coming up with some sketches and things. Um, so I will really look forward to seeing what you come up with um, for your sketches um, as you prepare to make these nine square drawings that use the elements and principles of art to communicate your story. Be really thoughtful, guys. You know, the elements and principles, they are oh, the tools that the artists use to convey, ide that artists use to convey ideas. Um, so be really thoughtful. You know, what elements and principles are going to best convey the idea that you want to convey in each square? All right, have a good day.